sir we are live now uh, i request your permission to start with the session sir thank okay. you thank you so much sir are you home everyone a warm and heartfelt heartfelt welcome to the 17th session of higher anatomy a prestigious lecture series designed exclusively for the first year bms students we are delighted to have you all here today but before we embark on this enlightening journey let me take a moment to introduce you to jignasa a pan india platform driven by the student community of bharata within the aish fraternity created by abvp in the year 1998 our motto is simple yet powerful learn aish to practice aish we strive to empower aish students from campuses to communities bridging the gap between students policy makers and administrative authorities jignasa serves as a unifying force connecting every aspect of aish including students academicians practitioners scientists industrialists and hospital all under one inclusive umbrella we firmly believe in thinking globally while acting locally working tirelessly over the past two decades to strengthen the aish education system and instill confidence among aish students to achieve our goals jignasa has undertaken various impactful initiatives across the country ranging from grassroots to international platforms some of our key initiatives includes study circles lecture series pre medical camps social health status surveys hands on training workshops conferences interaction with eminent vaidyas and academicians brainstorming sessions national arogya expo and international conference national level seminars medicinal plant visits pharmaceutical visits agitations for high student community advocating for the rights and demands of high students private internship programs interaction with traditional healers online mock tests social awareness free health care assistance during natural calamities and accidents through local governing bodies in our yesterday's session it was a testament to the overwhelming response and enthusiasm from students with over 500 live participants and more than 11000 views we are humbled by your, your engagement and dedication to learning at jignasa we understand the financial challenges that many students face when it comes to assessing commercial study platforms we firmly believe that education should be accessible to all regardless of their financial constraints hence we are committed to providing a helping hand to every student fueled by the burning desire to learn with the support of experts in the field we offer you the opportunity to learn anatomy with no financial burden all we ask for is your unwavering interest and passion for knowledge today we are honored to have dr murlidhar badigar bms md phd professor and hod rachana sharira from bldas ayurveda mahavidyalaya hospital and research center vijayapura sir has completed his ug from avs ayurveda mahavidyalaya vijayapura and pg from sdm college of ayurveda udupi and phd from also from sdm college of ayurveda udupi sir has teaching experience for 14 years and sir has submitted number of theses submitted for rgss are two as pg and phd scholars and seminars attended are 15 international national level and state level seminars sir has done 10 paper presentations more than 10 pre paper presentations sir has done presentation in modern medical college the concepts of cell in ayurveda at bldas medical college vijayapura bilateral assessor accessory renal artery a case report at beams belgavi erythropoiesis in ayurveda at jss medical college mysore sir has also uh, attended as rotp uh, as three rotps and more than sir has been resource person for more than 10 programs sir has university exam duties like paper setting for kelly university ntr university andhra pradesh and and in total sir has preserved over 90 plus uh, not preserved uh, sir has dissected over 90 plus cadavers till date in different colleges as guest lecturer in various colleges of karnataka sir has done 12 webinar presentations and uh, and published 10 articles sir it's our esteemed pleasure to host you today and we welcome you to the session sir and all the students who have joined us today for the session we welcome you all sir now i request to you to carry forward with the session thank you
ओके गुड इवनिंग वन एंड ऑल कार्तिक कैन यू शेयर माय पीपीटी यस सर यस सर आई विल स्टार्ट शेयरिंग नाउ जिज्ञासा गिवन अ ग्रेट ग्रेट प्लैटफॉर्म टू द स्टूडेंट्स हुए आर अपीयरिंग फॉर द एग्जाम सो थिंकिंग टुवर्ड्स द स्टूडेंट्स रिगार्डिंग द एग्जाम्स यूजली ऑल ऑफ यू नो द स्टूडेंट्स आर गोइंग टू स्टडी थ्रू आउट द इयर बट देर विल बी ए फोबिया दैट इज द एग्जाम फोबिया सो ऑलवेज द वेन द एग्जाम्स आर वेरी नियर the students are having the fear regarding the exams but this jignasa platform a given to the students to remove the fear from the uh, brain so um, already kartik introduced uh, me and i'm very thankful to kartik for giving the this platform for uh, us to share a few things regarding the nervous system with the students so in the exam usually the when exams are very near the students become nervous so among all the chapters there is a one uh, chapter it is very interesting and also little bit difficult to the students they feel like that that is a nervous system so today i am going to discuss with you regarding the nervous system as exam oriented not as in the theory classes because uh, nervous system is a too much vast it's very difficult to to uh, complete within one hour but exam oriented what are the questions asked in the exams repeatedly and how to answer in the exams first before going to start the session uh, any question paper it may be first or second share rachna first the student must and should make a standard protocol to write the answers for example any organ or any artery or any bone any questions are there first you should write at least a two line introduction so after that you should write the location of that organ next you should write dimensions next the parts of that particular organ and after the parts the students requesting and ordering to the students to draw the neat label diagram if it is not neat so it's okay no problem at least draw the rough diagrams to uh, instead of wasting the time to explain more draw the diagrams and use the flow charts because the students are studied for throughout the year and writing in 3 hours it's a difficult task so how to utilize the time draw maximum diagrams in the anatomy and put the flow charts and uh, this presentation is a uh, very useful to the students in the exam to convey your maximum knowledge to the teachers with this i am going to start my a uh, topic the nervous system next slide please okay students please get up ready for the nervous system so here the nervous system itself is speaking what nervous system is speaking i am the master system of your body i am custodian and coordinator of all your activities i am the most complex and widely investigated and least understood by the scientist it means nervous system is still it is investigating the scientists are working so hard on the this part but what we are understood it's very least knowledge but this nervous system for the simplification purpose the the uh, anatomist divided this nervous system into two parts that is a central nervous system and peripheral nervous system now i want to introduce my family members nervous system is introducing his family members the two family members they are one is neurons another one is neuroglia cells next please my first family member neuron is very important but highly important it means there is no mitotic division in the neuron and my second family member there is a neuroglia cells are also very important but for the purpose of the support only 
but they have a capacity of high mitotic division by these words you come to know that i am vip person so that vip person always keep z security so i think you know the modi and uh, all the great personalities they are secured by the z security to protect similarly uh, in our body it is also vip organ it is protected by the blood brain barrier first second one is meninges third one is skull bones with this small introduction i am going to start a straight away the topic next okay in the students what is nervous system if the question is asked to the students immediately the student answer is a uh, nervous system is divided into central nervous system uh, peripheral nervous system uh, brain spinal cord nerves like that they are writing vague answers so you should not write like that first define what is nervous system then that what you are writing central nervous system and peripheral nervous system all they are the parts of the nervous system or anatomical divisions of the nervous system the first the student must and should know what is the definition of nervous system so next please yes the system which control and coordinates all the activities of our body there is a one system inside our body which control and coordinates all the activities of the body how it is controlling by transmitting the signals to and from the different part of the body how it is going to send the signals through stimuli integration response mechanism that system is known as nervous system for example stimuli stimuli is the any touch sensation or it may be taste sensation or any sensation the any type of the stimuli applied on our body so that stimulus is travel through the signals to the brain and brain is going to integrate your information and after that there will be a response so where this mechanism is going to happen that system is called by the name of nervous system next please next please okay see here anything for example if any uh, uh, note in the notice board for the students are very you now fear regarding the exams and most of the students are asking sir uh, exams are postponing or not like that so imagine you are in the college notice board and notice is there exams were postponed so immediately you are observed that then that information is going to your brain that brain is going to integrate and after that it gives the response to your legs you are moving away from the textbooks you will stop the study and feel relax so that is the second one example i have given so anything anything it may be you are hearing a new movie is released then message is going to your brain a brain is going to integrate and it, it will take the decision whether it going to move to the towards the theater or not so that type where this circuit is going to happen that system is called by the name of nervous system next slide please so in short in short you can define you student must and should define like this a stimuli response system a followed by the integration in our body that system is known as nervous system it's a short definition so need not necessary to write a lengthy definitions simple what is the nervous system the nervous system a stimuli response system a followed by the integration in our body that system is known as nervous system so most of the times the question is in the exam for long essay define nervous system or what is nervous system write its anatomical divisions so first i am going to cover that first i define that next is anatomical divisions next next slide please yes next after definition of the nervous system next we are going to discuss about the nervous system classification or divisions of the nervous system i think this question was repeatedly asked what is nervous system <coughs> and explain its anatomical divisions the nervous system is broadly divided into two types one is the anatomical division another one is a physiological division next slide please the nervous system a broadly divided into two parts one is central nervous system another one is the peripheral nervous system the central nervous system includes the mainly two parts one is the brain another one is the spinal cord 
So brain is present in the cranial cavity and spinal cord is running downwards in the vertebral canal and it passes from the foramina magnum. And next is the peripheral nervous system. Peripheral nervous system means these are the nerves. The nerves, those which are attached to the spinal cord or the nerve which are attached to the brain. So such a the nerves are or that nerves are uh, comes under the peripheral nervous system. So basically the peripheral nervous system includes two types of the nerves. One is cranial nerves, another one is the spinal nerves. The nerves which are attached to the brain stem and the brain. So that nerves are called by the name of cranial nerves and those nerves attached to the spinal cord, they are called by the name of spinal nerves. Next, please. Next. So this total nervous system, first take an idea, the total nervous system, it is divided into three parts. One is frozen cephalon, second one is mesencephalon, third one is the rhombencephalon. So otherwise there is another point, the frozen cephalon is also called by the name of forebrain and mesencephalon is also known as midbrain and rhombencephalon is also known as hindbrain. Next please. Then what are the structures in the forebrain? So further, the forebrain is further divided into telencephalon and the diencephalon. So outer part of the brain, so what in the cranial cavity it is situated, so that brain, if you are taken, the first is the forebrain or you can say front wave brain. So front, a broad area, the big area, so that is further divided into two parts. One is outer part and another one is the inner part or the base of the brain. So that is forebrain further divided into telencephalon, that is the outer part, and diencephalon, that is the base of the brain. So dance, uh, sorry, telencephalon, also known as cerebrum. Then cerebrum is further divided into lobes, that is the frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, temporal lobe, insula, and the limbic lobe. So actually in the exam, the students are writing only four lobes, frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, temporal lobe. But you must and should mention insula and also limbic lobe. Limbic lobe is rather, it is a, not an anatomical, much anatomical lobe. It is a, more concerned with the physiology. But this limbic lobe is distributed under the frontal, parietal, occipital and the temporal lobe. So first is forebrain. Forebrain is divided into telencephalon and diencephalon. Then telencephalon is a cerebrum. The cerebrum has further divided into six lobes. And come to the point diencephalon. Diencephalon means at the base of the brain, the, it is a connection. It is a connecting structure between the brain stem and cerebrum. So this connecting structure consists of group of gray matter. That group of the gray matter together called by the name of, that is a diencephalon. The diencephalon further divided into thalamus, hypothalamus, metathalamus, subthalamus, and the epithalamus. Next slide, please. And first we are going to discuss about one by one under the heading of forebrain. So in the forebrain, first we are going to discuss about the cerebrum. And... In the exam, this question is also asked repeatedly. Explain cerebrum in detail. This is the one question. And another question is, explain superior lateral surface of cerebral hemisphere. Superior lateral means only you should explain the superior laterally uh, what the structures are present. So first we are going to discuss about the cerebrum. Cerebrum is the it is the most part, biggest part of the central nervous system. It's a big one. And compared to the other structure of the uh, nervous system or central nervous system, the cerebrum is the largest part of the forebrain. And this uh, uh, cerebrum consists of the two hemispheres. One is the right hemisphere. Another one is the left hemisphere. Uh, both the right and left hemispheres are interconnected. The right hemisphere and the left hemisphere, both are interconnected through a a band of white matter. So that white matter is communicating with the right and left hemispheres. So that band is called by the name of carpus callosum that is marked with the red arrow. So that is a carpus callosum is a C-shaped structure present on the medial surface of the cerebrum and which communicates or which connects right and left cerebral hemispheres. This is a connection between the right and left cerebral hemispheres. And above the carpus callosum, the right and left cerebral hemispheres are separated. There is no connection here. 
so that separation is done by the fold of the dura mater so that is called by the name of flex cerebri the student you should know what are the point one is two cerebral hemispheres are interconnected by the corpus callosum and two cerebral hemispheres are separated by a fold of the dura mater that is flex cerebri next yes next if you take on one cerebral hemisphere if you take the one cerebral hemisphere what are the parts it consists the three poles one is anterior pole another one is anterior pole is present at the anterior end of the frontal lobe so that is called by the name of uh, anterior uh, oh, sorry frontal pole and posterior pole the posterior pole is present on the back in the occipital lobe then it is called posterior pole then there is a one more pole that is called lateral pole lateral pole is present on the temporal lobe that is called temporal pole it means the cerebral hemisphere consists three poles frontal pole occipital pole and lateral pole or uh, temporal pole after the three poles next surfaces each cerebral hemisphere presents the three surfaces the first diagram it explains the superior lateral surface and second diagram the, the whatever that is showing there is a medial surface and after observing the medial surface go for the inferiorly there is a one more surface that's called inferior surface so the cerebral hemisphere if you take on the one cerebral hemisphere like this though it consists the superior lateral surface medial surface and inferior surface so this inferior surface further divided into two parts one is small anterior part and broad posterior part the small anterior part is called orbital part and big and large area that's called tentorial part so it means superior lateral surface superior lateral surface inferior surface and the medial surface so these are the three surfaces of the cerebral hemisphere next is okay then after this structure of the cerebrum the cerebrum uh, consist of uh, major four parts one is the cortex second one is the white matter third one is the basal ganglia and fourth one is the lateral ventricle the cortex is the outer part white matter means there is a bundle of the axons running so that bundle of the axon itself is the white matter and at the base of the brain there is a specialized uh, gray matter uh, uh, masses are present so they are called by the name of basal ganglia and some of the cavities are present inside the cerebrum the two cavities are found in the cerebrum one is lateral ventricle second one is the third ventricle actually the third ventricle lies between the two thalami next please okay next we are going to discuss about the lobes of the cerebrum so cerebrum lobes already i told next please yes so how it is divided it is divided by the help of one sulcus that is called central sulcus so cerebral hemisphere identify the frontal pole identify the pole, uh, occipital pole and take the length and identify the midpoint in the midpoint there is a one sulcus there is a one depression on superior lateral surface that is called by the name of central sulcus so this central sulcus divides the cerebral hemisphere anterior part and the posterior part the uh, uh, anterior to the central sulcus there is a frontal lobe posterior to the central sulcus there is a parietal lobe after the parietal lobe there is a one more sulcus that is present on the medial surface so that is called parieto occipital sulcus so that parieto occipital sulcus separates the parietal lobe from the occipital lobe and if you observe on the lateral side there is a one more uh, sulcus that is a lateral sulcus it means the cerebral hemisphere is further divided into small lobes by the help of three depressions one is central sulcus second one is lateral sulcus third one is parieto occipital sulcus next please okay next the functions of that particular lobes next please yes the first part the first part what you are observing the frontal pole the frontal lobe the frontal lobe is mainly designed for the motor activities parietal lobe is mainly designed for the sensory activities and 
temporal lobe is designed for the particularly hearing and next please next ha huh. next is the limbic lobe limbic lobe is for the planning and other emotions that is the emotional components related to the limbic lobe next we are going to discuss about the frontal lobe the frontal lobe a red color line in the center you are observing so that is called central sulcus in front of the central sulcus there is a gyrus that is called precentral gyrus and after the precentral gyrus one more depression is there that is called by the name of precentral sulcus after the precentral sulcus from anterior to posterior there is a two sulcuses are there superior frontal sulcus and inferior frontal sulcus then the this uh, sulcus divides superior frontal gyrus middle frontal gyrus and inferior frontal gyrus so this is going to uh, th this uh, uh, division anatomical division a uh, particularly the frontal lobe so next is parietal lobe a uh, posterior to the central sulcus there is a parietal lobe then the parietal lobe further sorry uh, posterior to the central sulcus there is a one gyrus that is called post central gyrus and after that immediately there is a depression that is called by the name of post central sulcus and after that what you are observing there is a one more sulcus that is interparietal sulcus so this interparietal sulcus divide the parietal lobe into superior parietal lobule and inferior parietal lobule next slide please okay next there is a temporal lobe the temporal lobe is also divided into three gyrus by the two sulcus one is superior temporal gyrus and inferior temporal gyrus sorry superior temporal sulcus and inferior temporal sulcus and uh, it is divided into three gyri one is superior uh, temporal gyri middle temporal gyri and inferior temporal gyri next is there is a one more lobe that's called insula how to identify the insula so retract this lateral sulcus drag the lateral sulcus uh, superiorly and inferiorly and insert your finger between the in the lateral sulcus then you will get one more lobe so that lobe is called by the name of insula next please okay come to the medial surface now we have completed the superior lateral surface next we are going to the medial surface so medial surface consist a major uh, structures one is a ccf structure is there inverted ccf structure that is called carpus callosum above the carpus callosum there is a sulcus that is called collagenal sulcus above the collagenal sulcus there is a gyrus that is called by the name of cingulate gyrus above the cingulate gyrus there is a sulcus that is called cingulate sulcus and above the cingulate sulcus there is a one more gyrus that is called medial frontal gyrus next please okay next slightly we are going to discuss about the functional areas of the frontal lobe next please see the already i told the frontal lobe is designed for the motor activities all of you know the motor activities are one is a primary motor area and another one is pre motor area the primary motor area is present on the precentral uh, gyrus and anterior to the precentral gyrus there is a one more point that is called pre motor area the pre motor area which is represented by the area number 6 and uh, this uh, uh, primary motor area it is represented by the area number 4 next please next there is another one is prefrontal cortex and another another uh, area that is a motor speech area motor speech area or broca's area so in the exam repeatedly asked question broca's area so you should remember it is a part of frontal lobe number 1 number 2 it is represented by the area number 44 and 45 then it is called broca's area or motor speech area if any injury is taken place to this broca's area then person is having the a uh, loss of speech this is a motor activities are going to hamper so person is going to understand what they are talking in front of him but he is not able to answer so that is motor uh, paralysis or you can say motor uh, 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 loss of 
files or you can say uh, uh, broca's area injury leads to the uh, <coughs> what is that uh, impairment in the files next slide please next please next 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 parietal lobe the parietal lobe is already you should remember one basic point, uh, point. parietal lobe is mainly designed for the sensory activities then among them the sensory there is a primary sensory primary somatosensory area and there will be another one is there that is uh, association area so these are also represented by post central gyrus and back to the post central gyrus so they are also represented by number 1 2 3 and next one is occipital lobe so the occipital lobe is mainly designed for the visual activity so uh, i think uh, uh, they are they are also divided into primary visual uh, activity or like uh, uh, so that is uh, uh, mainly what you are uh, telling this uh, occipital lobe that's completely related to the visual activity next slide please next please next next visual association area okay next please okay next temporal already i told the temporal area which is related to the hearing so then primary auditory area is present in the temporal lobe that is represented by the area number 41 and the 42 so then the auditory association area so that is also present in the temporal lobe then there is a para hippocampal area that, that is related to the limbic part next 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 okay you uh, the student must and should know the two important areas already i explained that is the one is broca's area another one is wernick's area broca's area is the a motor activity and the wernick's area that is uh, related to the uh, sensation of the speech because someone is talking in front of the patient patient is going to understand but not able to speak that is a broca's area damage but uh, what you are talking patient is not able to understand in such a cases there is a injury to the wernix area so both one is a sensory uh, speech area and another one is the motor speech area next please okay uh, then if you took the cross section of the uh, this one cerebrum then you will get the two points one is the gray matter another one is the white matter so what is the gray matter and what is the white matter the white matter is the collection of the axons gray matter is the collection of the nuclei or collection of the cell bodies where the cell bodies of the neurons are collected that area is called by the name of gray, gray matter and white matter is the fibers there is the axons these fibers are classified into three categories one is association fibers means one area is associated with another area through the association fibers and next is commissural fibers one cerebral hemisphere is communicating to the another hemisphere through the commissural fibers the best example is corpus callosum and projecting fibers projecting fibers means the fibers are coming from the spinal cord projecting to the brain or from the brain projecting to the spinal cord so they are called by the name of projecting fibers next please okay next this question is also asked in the exam that is a uh, explain corpus callosum what is this corpus callosum the corpus callosum is the connection between the right and left hemisphere it is present on the medial surface of the brain or the cerebrum and which consist commissural fibers so it connects the right and left hemispheres next slide please then this corpus callosum is further uh, divided into three parts next please next 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 yes this is present on the medial surface so this is, uh, okay okay uh, this uh, medial surface the corpus callosum the front part of the corpus callosum is called the rostrum the starting point and next there is a curved part that curved part is called genu and next remaining part is called body and the last part is called by the name of splenium and below the corpus callosum there is a cavity that cavity is called by the name of lateral ventricle next slide please next slide please 
Yes. Next, next slide, please. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. See, at the base of the brain, already I told, at the base of the brain, there is a group of nuclei or the group of uh, gray matter. So that group of the gray matter is called basal ganglia. So this question is also asked in the exam. What is basal ganglia? And explain basal ganglia. What is the basal ganglia? Actually, basal ganglia is the misnomer. Actually, it is a basal nuclei. In recent textbook, all the textbooks, they are mentioned as a basal nuclei. So what is the nuclei? What is the ganglia? Collection of cell body in the central nervous system is called nuclei. Collection of cell body in the peripheral nervous system is called by the name of uh, ganglia. But here there is a collection of cell body in the central nervous system. It should be called by the name of basal nuclei instead of basal ganglia. But both are same. That is a basal ganglia or basal nuclei. What is this basal ganglia or basal nuclei? At the base of the brain, there is a one more a collection of the gray matter. So that gray matter uh, mass, <coughs> which is uh, uh, called by the name of basal ganglia. So this basal ganglia includes number one, that is a lentiform nucleus and putamen and uh, a quadrate nucleus and uh, globuses. So these are the four a group of nuclei here. So these four group of the nuclei are crossed by one uh, a green color band, what you are observing, that is called by the name of internal capsule. The internal capsule, uh, anterior to the internal capsule, there is a dark part that is called quadrate nucleus. And between the uh, uh, number one and number three, there is a dark area. So that a dark area is called by the name of a putamen and the lentiform nucleus. Next, please. And what is the exactly the program of this? Uh, how to write in the exam? First, write the, the collection of a gray matter at the base of the cerebrum that is called by the name of basal ganglia. The basal ganglia includes the structures that is the quadrate nucleus, a lentiform nucleus, and a putamen and globosus. So these are the nuclei. And after that, what main program it is doing? The main program of this particular basal ganglia, it is act as a accessory motor area. First, it, it uh, initiates the muscle movement. It takes the permission from the cerebral cortex and giving the order to the uh, muscles. So as actually inside the body, the initiation of the movement and contraction of the muscles, everything is under the control of particularly basal ganglia with the permission of cerebral cortex. Number one. Number two, if the basal ganglia is damaged, then the person is suffering from the movement disorders, abnormal movements in the body. Okay. Next one is after this, telencephalon. Next, we are going to discuss about the diencephalon. So, diencephalon, which includes the thalamus, metathalamus, hypothalamus, subthalamus, and the epithalamus. So, whatever the green color area, what you are observing, so that is called by the name of diencephalon below the carpus callosum. Next, please. Okay. Thalamus. Thalamus are the yug-shaped structures. Yug-shaped structure lies above the brainstem and below the cerebrum. Below the cerebrum and above the brainstem. And this yug-shaped structure is nothing but the gray matter. It is a completely collection of the cell body. And if this uh, thalamus observed carefully, there will be one Y-shaped uh, line is seen in the picture. So that Y-shaped line, the, that is going to divide the thalamus into uh, different nuclei. Anterior group of the nuclei, posterior group of the nuclei, ventral nuclei, and dorsal nuclei. So in the exam, if the question is thalamus, then write, these are the egg-shaped structure. Then it is uh, divided by the Y-shape uh, internal medullary lamina, which divides the thalamus into four categories, anterior group of the nuclei, posterior group of the nuclei, lateral group, and the medial group of nuclei. And the thalamus are two in number. One is the right thalamus, another one is left thalamus. And right and left thalamus are interconnected to the adhesion. There will be one communication between the right and left thalamus. And what is the main program of the thalamus? 
<coughs> the main program of the thalamus is this is a sensory relay station whatever the touch information pain info ascends in the ascending tract of the spinal cord and finally they are going to reach to the thalamus and after the thalamus the sensory information is delayed to the cerebral cortex it means before going to the cerebral cortex first the first it is uh, what the sensory information is dumped into the thalamus and after that it is projecting to the uh, cerebral hemisphere next please next is hypothalamus so hypothalamus is the small area just below the thalamus i think in the picture you are observing so that is the hypothalamus just hypothalamus size is uh, uh, just our uh, little finger has a nail no so that much size it has so that is the hypothalamus it's a small structure but it is also known as autonomic ganglia once again it is also misnomer so autonomic ganglia means all the autonomic nervous system sympathetic parasympathetic the totally under the control of hypothalamus and hypothalamus is also divided into group of nuclei supraoptic nuclei and preoptic nuclei like that many nuclei are there at least you should write the small area just below the thalamus and above the pituitary gland there is a gray matter <coughs> a thin plate of the gray matter so that is called by the name of hypothalamus then hypothalamus the main nucleus of the hypothalamus supraoptic nuclei and the uh, <coughs> and the paraventricular nuclei so other uh, nuclei are present here but this hypothalamus is having the connection with the pituitary gland the same hypothalamus fibers are going to uh, enter into the uh, hypothalamus that is called hypothalamo hypophysial tract so after that just write some functions of the hypothalamus so hypothalamus mainly involved in the autonomic activities it regulates the temperature heart rate and it regulates the peristaltic movement and the digestion so almost all the autonomic activities are under the control of hypothalamus next please okay next is metathalamus see the metathalamus metathalamus is nothing but pineal gland so pineal gland where it is present <coughs> it is present just above the midbrain between the two midbrain uh, right and left uh, part of the midbrain there is a one mass a small mass is present so th that is uh, called by the name of uh, pineal gland the pineal gland is the main structure comes under the metathalamus i think uh, you know it is one of the endocrine gland pineal gland it is a small gland and uh, main thing it uh, secretes the melatonin so that melatonin is going to control the activity of the pituitary gland so it it uh, regulates the pituitary gland activity and also it acts as a biological clock <coughs> biological clock and also some of the textbook written it is a seat of soul also so this is about the metathalamus next please okay next is epithalamus epithalamus is nothing but the pituitary gland so already you know pituitary gland the pituitary gland is the uh, master gland in the body uh, which is a anterior pituitary posterior pituitary it's a adenohypophysis and uh, neurohypophysis then you can write in the epithalamus usually in the exam <coughs> the question is thalamus or hypothalamus usually epithalamus subthalamus so they are not going to ask and you know metathalamus instead of asking the metathalamus and epithalamus they are going to ask the directly pineal gland and uh, pituitary gland okay then there is the another one is subthalamus subthalamus is a small piece of the gray matter which lies between the midbrain and the thalamus it is a small piece of the gray matter which lies between the above the midbrain and below the thalamus next please next is the midbrain next so this is the midbrain okay there is a pons medulla oblongata so the total together called brain stem but i am explaining uh, prosencephalon mesencephalon and uh, rhombencephalon like that so please uh, 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 learn like this only okay next is hind brain sorry previous 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 okay first is the mid brain mesencephalon is also known as mid brain 
so see there is a green color part upper part there is a square a rectangular part so that is represented with the green color so that part is called midbrain so what is this midbrain actually the right and left cerebral hemispheres are there na so right hemisphere having the axons left hemisphere also having the nerve fibers all the fibers are descending downwards right hemisphere fibers are all the right cerebral hemisphere pair fibers are converted into a bundle and left hemisphere fibers are converted to one bundle so there is a right bundle one left bundle so this bundle of the nerve fibers itself is called by the name of midbrain and so this midbrain consists the anterior surface and the posterior surface on the anterior surface if you are observed on the uh, anterior surface you will get two cerebral two bundles of the nerve fibers they are called by the name of cerebral peduncles or crus cerebri between the crus cerebri there is a depression so that depression is called interpeduncular fossa inside the interpeduncular fossa there is a rounded masses are there they are called mammillary bodies so that mammillary bodies along with that small holes are present they are called by the name of posterior perforating substance so midbrain if the question is midbrain midbrain is the <laughs> it is the mesencephalon it is also known as mesencephalon the midbrain is a connecting structure between the cerebrum between the cerebrum and brain stem or you can say pons next uh, that consists the anterior surface and the posterior surface and in the posterior surface it represents four elevations that four elevation together called by the name of corpora quadrigemina or the two upper elevations and two lower elevations the two upper elevations that is called uh, uh, lower elevations are total together it's called corpora quadrigemina next please okay next is hind brain hind brain is further divided into two parts this called metencephalon and myelencephalon so metencephalon is the further divided into pons and the cerebrum sorry cerebellum and myelencephalon is nothing but the medulla oblongata so cerebrum cerebrum is further divided into anterior lobe posterior lobe and plaquilo nodular lobe next slide please okay see here this is the the medulla oblongata and uh, upper is the pons and two cerebral hemispheres and the pons is connected to the cerebral hemisphere through the middle peduncle and midbrain is connecting to the cerebellum through superior peduncle and uh, this uh, what you are calling medulla oblongata is connected to the cerebellum through a small uh, bundle of the axons so that is called by the name of inferior peduncle so it means cerebel uh, get the input from midbrain and pons and also from the medulla oblongata next please okay what is the main program of this particularly the cerebellum the cerebellum is helps for the balancing the body so two types of the balance in the body one is kinetic balance another one is the static balance static balance means when the person is standing balancing the body so that is called static balance but when the person is running or walking on the rope that is called kinetic the uh, balance or kinetic uh, sorry static balance and kinetic balance the two things so any uh, any uh, whatever it may be so main is the function of the cerebellum is to balance the body and how it is going to balance the body by it consists mainly a nuclei inside that there is a nuclei so four nuclei are present inside the cerebellum you should remember that is that is a dentate nucleus Uh, uh, nu uh, globus nucleus and vestigial nucleus and ambiliform nucleus so all these the nuclei they are going to control this uh, particular balancing mechanism but uh, because of the lack of the time just i am uh, uh, explaining but usually in the exam the question is cerebrum and uh, very rarely asked the cerebellum and cerebellum is for uh, two cerebral hemispheres are interconnected by the worm like structure in the center that is called by the name of vermis and further the cerebellum is also divided into multiple lobes next please okay next come to the point pns the pns includes the cranial nerves 
it's the 12 pairs of the cranial nerves and spinal nerves 31 pairs of the spinal nerves next please okay these are the cranial nerves almost all the students know this cranial nerves the first one is the olfactory nerve optic oculomotor trochlear trisaminal abducens facial nerve auditory and glossopharyngeal vagus spinal accessory and hypoglossal see if the question is on the cranial nerve how to answer in the exam for example optic nerve one example optic nerve so you should discuss where these things are attached one is central attachment another one is peripheral attachment for example optic nerve centrally it is connected to the optic sorry occipital lobe peripherally it is connected to the eyeball then question is from the intracranium how it is coming to the extracranium or how it is reached to the eye so it reached to the eye through one foramina that foramina is called superior orbital fissure or optic canal through optic canal it's reaching and it is purely sensory like this any cranial nerve if they are asked then you should write like this another one is example facial nerve for example facial nerve the central it is attached to the brain stem and it pass through the foramina that is the internal auditory meatus and reach to the face in the face it is divided into five branches and that five branches are both motor and the sensory if this nerve is injured then that condition is called facial paralysis or bell's palsy so like this the four four to five important point regarding each cranial nerve you must and should remember example i told already one is central attachment another one is peripheral attachment where it is reaching and third one is from which foramen it is exiting and fourth point is whether it is sensory or motor or both and fifth point is <coughs> fifth point is clinical anatomy related to that nerve so because now you have exams are very near it is very difficult to read all the course and everything but in the exam you can write if you are attended the dissection classes on that basis you can write the course also but these five points must and should uh, make one chart in front of the uh, nerve chart that is the uh, cranial nerves right central attachment peripheral attachment and uh, sensory or motor and uh, next which foramen it is exiting and last point is clinical anatomy so five points if you are written uh, if you are prepared then it is easy for the exam then there is one question number of the cranial nerves in the body 12 actually 12 but there is a one more cranial nerve that is called zero cranial nerve that is for the interest point of view but uh, not important for the exam next slide please okay next the spinal cord is attached there is a spinal cord is uh, attached by the nerves they are called by the name of spinal nerves next 31 pairs of the spinal nerves are there they are going to form the plexus around the uh, spinal cord and supplying to the upper limb and the lower limb next please uh, next please so little bit i am going to highlight the physiological division because that is the one point is very important here so physiologically also the nervous system is divided into central nervous system and peripheral nervous system but there is no change in the central nervous system but there will be a slight change in the peripheral nervous system what is the change in the peripheral nervous system the peripheral nervous system they are not dividing into cranial nerves and the spinal nerves instead of that they are dividing the somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system so why i am taking this point here because i want to explain a little bit regarding the autonomic nervous system next slide please yeah the pns is further divided into sensory pns and the motor pns that is called sensory part and uh, motor part next okay sensory part further divided into two parts one is the special sense another one is the general sense the special senses are those senses they are initiated or elicited through the specific part of the body for example vision vision means you can see through your eyes only not through the nose smell from nose only not other part of the body and a taste and hearing and equilibrium of the body but here touch is not a special sense because you can pursue the touch sensation from the skin
you can uh, oral mucous membrane also so because of that reason touch is not a special sense uh, next please Karthik, next please. Okay, motor PNS. The motor PNS is further divided into somatic and autonomic. So next, next please. Okay, okay, okay. So one more point. Actually, there was a, some technical problem. What I sent to the this one. So so stop, stop, stop. Okay. What is the autonomic nervous system? So usually in the exam, there is a question, ANS, explain ANS or autonomic nervous system. Otherwise, the question is explain sympathetic chain. This is a repeatedly asked question. There is a sympathetic chain or explain the formation of the sympathetic chain. So these are the two important questions. First, what is autonomic nervous system? So autonomic nervous system is not controlled automatically, but it is also under the control of central nervous system. Then how to define the autonomic nervous system? So autonomic nervous system, the autonomic nervous system which innervates, the system which innervates or supplying to blood vessels, smooth muscles, blood vessels and smooth muscles and viscera, the organs, the nerve, sorry, the nervous system which supplies to the blood vessels and uh, blood, blood vessels and viscera and the uh, smooth muscles uh, from which nervous system the nerve fibers are coming so that nervous system is called by the name of uh, autonomic nervous system the autonomic nervous system broadly divided into one is sympathetic another one is the parasympathetic then further parasympathetic also having the sensory nerves and motor nerves and sympathetic is also having the sensory unit and the motor in it and what is the sympathetic nervous system most of the students what they are thinking uh, sympathetic nervous system is stimulating and parasympathetic uh, nervous system is inhibiting no they are working in counter manner means one is stimulating another one act as a inhibiting then how to define the sympathetic nervous system the sympathetic nervous system anatomically it is lumbo sorry <coughs> thoraco lumbar outflow it means the sympathetic nervous system fibers are arising from the thoracic segments of the spinal cord and, and also uh, they are arising from the lumbar segments of the spinal cord. Hence, the sympathetic nervous system is also known as thoracolumbar outflow. And after nerves are emerging, sympathetic, sorry, parasympathetic, sympathetic nerves are arising from the thoracic and lumbar part, they are going to make ganglia. Then the, after the ganglia, the nerve fibers are running towards the organs. So then before the ganglia, the nerve is called pre-ganglionic fibers. And after the ganglia, the nerve is called post-ganglionic nerve. So post-ganglionic nerve is supplying to the organ or blood vessel or smooth muscles. So this is about the sympathetic. And usually the sympathetic activity is fight and flight. When you are in the tension, when you are afraid, when you are in the fear, automatically imagine our sympathetic nervous system is going to activate. Dilatation of the pupil, dil dilatation of the pu pupil, horophilations means uh, 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 erection of the hairs on the body and next there will be a what um, uh, sweat secretion and sweating. So heartbeat is going to increase. It means uh, the increased heartbeat means there is a sympathetic activity and next what is the parasympathetic nervous system the parasympathetic nervous system the fibers of the parasympathetic nervous system are arising from the cranial part and also sacral part hence it is called craniosacral outflow and these fibers <coughs> are also having the program 
opposite to the for example one organ supplied by sympathetic and also parasympathetic one is stimulating another one is the inhibiting for example heart rate is increased by the action of by the, uh, heart rate is increased by the action of particularly uh, that one uh, sympathetic nervous system that is inhibited by the parasympathetic then when you are fear tension sympathetic nervous system is going to activate when you are doing yoga dhyana dharana whatever it may be at that time parasympathetic nervous system is going to activate so automatically heart rate and blood pressure everything is controlled uh, scientifically by dhyana and other things okay so this is about the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system yes next slide please next one more important question define neuron and explain the structure of the neuron this was also asked the repeatedly question or draw the neat la neat label diagram of the neuron okay before going to that question first we studied the brain and uh, other parts but uh, generally what you are getting the two major parts sorry if you taken the histologically the brain or the nervous system uh, made up of by the two types of the nerves one is neuron another one is the neuroglia but neurons are the conducting units and uh, neuroglia are supportive cells first we are going to discuss about the neuron next please <coughs> in the exam the students are going to write the answer neuron regarding the neuron neuron is signal transmitting uh, it's a uh, action potential transmitting like that instead of that define first what is the neuron neuron is the structural and functional unit of nervous system so our it is a structural and functional unit of the nervous system next is structure of the neuron the structure of the neuron neuron is divided into major two parts one is soma another one is the process and it's the projections the soma is at the central part this is called also called by the name of cell body the cell body consists of the cell membrane the nucleus and the cytoplasm so uh, processes are one is axon another one is the dendrites the small projections what you are observing in the picture they are called by the name of dendrites and elongated projection that's called by the name of uh, uh, that is uh, axon next slide please so this is the uh, axon and the cell body so uh, you can uh, explain the different parts the axon consists that it is uh, covered by the myelin sheath and between the two myelin sheath there is a gap that is called uh, nodes of ranvier and there is a specialized cells are present they are called by the name of squam cells like that hmm? next please <coughs> and see this is a myelin sheath how the axon is uh, covered by the myelin sheath and between the uh, two lamin there is a gap that gap is called by the name of particularly uh, nodes of ranvier next please next please these are the parts okay so already i told the collection of the axons in the cns called a tracts and collection of the axons in the pns is called nerve the most of the times in the viva we are asking the question what is nerve the student answer is nerve is the chain of neurons it is not a chain of neuron it is the collection of the axons the multiple axons are grouped together that group itself is called by the name of nerve if this collection of the axons in the peripheral nervous system then it should called by the name of nerves if the collection of the axons in the central nervous system then it is called by the name of tracts next please yes classification of the neurons so first write the definition and draw the picture and next classify the neurons next please the neurons are classified is yes. according to the polarity according to the coverings of the axons according to the length of the axon according to the morphology and size and according to the physiology any one you can write in the exam not compulsory to all the things but some of the things are important for clinically in final year next slide please okay first according to the polarity if single pole is there that's called unipolar two poles are there then bipolar and multiple poles are there then it's called multipolar so unipolar neuron bipolar neuron and multipolar neuron 
see the cell body consists the multiple projections that's called multipolar the cell body have only two projections that is called bipolar then unipolar uh, two projections are there but the two projections are there but they are going to open into the cell body through only one pole hence it is called unipolar next please see according to the coverings of the axons some of the neurons are covered with the myelin sheath they are called myelinated neurons and some are not covered it's called unmyelinated neurons so what is the difference between myelinated and unmyelinated because myelinated the neurons are fast conductors unmyelinated neurons are slow conductors next please next according to the length of the axons so long axons are there then golgi type 1 short axons golgi type 2 and amacrine and uh, no axons there is no axons only the projections are there they are called by the name of amacrines next please okay next according to the morphology according to the uh, structure actually the what you are calling stellet cells fusiform cells basket cells plasc cells and pyramidal cells and according to the size uh, microneurons and macroneurons next please among them the important one is uh, unipolar bipolar and multipolar if you are written that it's sufficient but this is also very important neurons are also classified according to the physiology sensory neuron motor neuron and interneuron the motor sensory neurons are further divided into first order neuron second order neuron third order neuron it means the sensation is reaching to the brain through three group of the neurons first order neuron second order neuron third order neuron the so first order neuron lies in the peripheral part and second order neur neuron lies in the spinal cord and third order neuron lies in the uh, thalamus to the uh, cerebral cortex and next is motor neurons motor neurons are two types one is a upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron this is very 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 important in third year vatavedi every teacher is coming to the class and asking you don't know upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron so please remember this classification for the uh, uh, patient examination and not for your exam next please yes next please because uh, of the time so next please i already explained yes next please these are the upper motor neuron and the lower motor neuron this is the lower motor neuron from the spinal cord to the muscles there is a lower motor neuron from the spinal uh, sorry from the cerebral cortex to the spinal cord this is upper motor neuron So the specifications are there now with the lack of the time yes next please yes another type of the neurons is called neuroglia cells next please yes the neuroglia cells are these are the types astrocytes oligodendrocytes ependymal cells microglia cells swan cells and stellate cells astrocytes they helps in the formation of the blood brain barrier oligodendrocytes helps for the myelination in the central nervous system ependymal cells present in the ventricles they helps for the cerebral cerebrospinal fluid production and microglia cells are helps for, uh, act as a uh, phagocytosis or immune system of the nervous system they are called microglia cells and swan cells they are also myelination but in the peripheral nervous system stellate cells Uh, actually the exact function of the stellate cells you don't know but the thing some of the textbook explains that nutrition to the soma that is a cell body of the neuron next slide please okay before going to this point so some of the questions are there so that is a ventricular system so usually in the question ventricle so four ventricles are present in the body so first one is a lateral two ventricle and a third ventricle and fourth ventricle so lateral ventricle is present in the cerebrum below the corpus callosum and the third ventricle lies between the thalami and fourth ventricle lies on the anterior aspect of the brain stem and these all the ventricles are lined by ependymal cells they are secreting the csf and this csf is circulating so how it is circulating 
so from the lateral ventricle to the third ventricle there is a interventricular foramina then from the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle it is reaching there is a cerebral aqueduct and from the cerebral aqueduct it reaches to the particularly the what is the ventricles and after the ventricle fourth ventricle it reaches to the subarachnoid space through the foramina lusca and foramina megandi once only this question was asked foramina megandi and foramina lusca you should remember they are present on the lateral aperture of the uh, that is a fourth ventricle and they are communicating uh, to the subarachnoid space and ventricular csf is going to enter into the subarachnoid space if there is a question if there is a question on the ventricular system so then write the ventricle names and write the how it is circulating this is the one thing otherwise sometimes they are going to ask third ventricle and fourth ventricle then you should uh, little bit you should work for the third vent third ventricle boundaries and lateral ventricle first thing where it is exactly present you clarify then it is very easy to write the boundaries of the particular ventricles and next is last portion a little bit uh there is a dissection pictures just for the uh, refreshment of your mind so next slide please see this is a craniotomy after that you will get the cerebral uh, part there is especially that is uh, what you are observing the dura mater which covers the brain because brain is not seen next please yes uh next what we did do we cut the dura mater and after reflecting the dura mater then sulcus and gyrus you are observing so that is the reflecting the dura mater and after that we are going to study the folds of the dura mater and after that we are going to reach to the cerebrum and next we are going to plan for the cerebral study next please yeah see this is the cerebrum we are uh, taking out from the cranial cavity next please okay next how the craniotomy is uh, doing here just reflecting the cranial vault next okay there is a spinal cord dissection next is next please okay this is the one beautiful uh, section what we have taken see the ccf structure medial surface of the cerebrum is exposed so that is the ccf structure corpus callosum below the corpus callosum there is a cavity that cavity is called lateral ventricle and lateral ventricle is covered by one membrane that is called by the name of septum pellucidum okay this is the one round mark i done here the round uh, red color mark that is your pineal gland so during the taking the section so we are clearly very clearly observed that pineal gland and see in the medial sir medial view we are getting the pineal gland section next please yeah this is a one more thing one more i have not explained sorry spinal cord because that is also very important question in the exam the spinal cord they are asking cross section of the spinal cord or simply they are asking the spinal cord so if the question is spinal cord how to answer so spinal cord is uh, uh, elongated structure lies in the vertebral canal and it is a 45 cm long and it is covered by three membrane dura mater arachnoid mater and pia mater and also you write the subarachnoid space and the subdural space and after that external features of the cerebral uh, brain, uh, sorry that is spinal cord the external features of the spinal cord is anterior median fissure posterior median fissure anterior lateral sulcus posterior lateral sulcus so anterior surface lateral surface and the posterior surface these are the external features what you are explaining and after that you are taken the section when you took the cerebral hemisphere sorry this one spinal cord section see this is a section of the spinal cord h shaped structure you are observing so that is a h shaped structure is representing anterior horn and the posterior horn the short dilated part is a gray color matter central you are observing so that is called a central gray matter peripheral white matter so central gray matter is anterior horn and the posterior horn anterior horn is a short and it is a motor in nature posterior horn is a uh, sensory in nature and po uh, posterior horn is taking the input from the peripheral part and uh, anterior horn giving the output to the peripheral part 
and between this gray matter there is a white part that's called white matter that white matter is also divided into three parts anterior peniculus lateral peniculus and posterior peniculus anterior to the anterior horn is the anterior peniculus and between the uh, anterior horn and the lateral horn there is a area white color part that's called white peniculus uh, sorry lateral peniculus and uh, between the midline and the anterior horn there is a area that is called posterior peniculus so further the gray matter is divided into so many nuclear theory laminar theory so that much if you are uh, not remember at least external features and internal yacht shape structure you must and should write in the exam and also the blood supply to the brain very important question that is called circle of willis the circle of willis is formed by the carotid arteries and vertebral arteries at the base of the brain these uh, carotid arteries and vertebral arteries they are going to join in such a way that they are going to form one circle that circle is called circle of willis from the circle of willis the blood is going to supply to the this uh, particularly uh, brain and the spinal cord is supplied by anterior spinal artery and posterior spinal artery next slide please yes this is a one case i think white mass you are seeing this is a uh, patient of meningioma it's a big meningioma uh, found in the ct scan so that is creating the compression on the frontal lobe if the frontal lobe is compressed then emotions and uh, motor activities uh, particularly in that person the motor activities are going to hamper so this is a case what i seen in my clinic because the interesting purpose just i posted it here okay next slide please okay that's the last slide so thank you thank you very much uh, for giving me opportunity to share my views along with the students uh, i am very thankful to jignyasa team and also i am very thankful to our uh, uh, billowed principal dr sanjay kadlimati giving the opportunity to present in jignyasa platform and uh, all the students what they are uh, hearing my lecture and i am very thankful to all the students also and along with thanks one more thing i am wishing you uh, for your exams all the best and good luck for the exams and first in the exams don't take much tension don't activate your <coughs> sympathetic nervous system if the sympathetic nervous system is activated then pressure tension so please activate your parasympathetic nervous system by doing the yoga and dhyana and meditation that is going to help you to keep the things properly in your brain the whatever you are studied the studied matter is going to implant in the brain so properly number 1 number 2 in the rghs question paper what the question paper is there it's very a pattern is very very easy so follow the pattern what they are given the marks are also allotted according to that prepare number 1 number 2 don't write vague answers specific answers what they ask the question please write specific answers and that uh, helps you to save the time and time management is also very important in the exam you are giving the much important what you have studied you are writing pages together so and uh, some of the questions you are not uh, writing uh, uh, very minimum you are going to write so don't do like that and distribute the time properly and all the best good luck to all and thank you and a special thanks to kartik uh, he is uh, adjusted so many things and doing the work thank you thank you very much thank you sir thank you sir that that's really generous of you to say uh, and appreciate uh, our work sir uh, uh, really thanks for that sir uh, shall we take few questions from the students sir regarding yeah yeah definitely definitely definitely, uh, definitely. thank you sir uh, the first question is from nandu uh the question is sir to cover nervous system previous year question papers are enough uh previous question paper answers uh, that is <laughs> we can't uh, judge on that questions but uh, most of the times they are going to repeat but already i told so don't depend on that only but the thing is very simple i already told important questions in the nervous system the neuron structure important and uh, cerebral superior lateral surface of the cerebrum cerebrum uh, is important and uh, ventricular system and uh, cross section of the spinal cord 
and cranial nerves how to uh, study the cranial nerves i also given the hint so according to that you go uh, plan plan for it so if it is a time is there then go for the what i explained uh, detail otherwise if you don't have the time if you want leave uh, means uh, you should study other subject also then go through the previous question papers no problem but along with that a little bit uh, you should uh, do extra work thank you sir the another question is from a student named ashwini sir the question is uh, sir neuro anatomy is such a vast topic and uh, it is something that is very uh, useful for uh, for in future also uh, why, uh, for such a, a vast topic and a whole bdc volume is dedicated for neuro anatomy uh, for yeah, such yeah. a vast topic why the marks uh, allotted is very less is the question <laughs> Uh, actually, <clears throat> this is the decision taken by the NCSM. Okay, so I'll, I, always I am teaching to the students two type things. One is the students are studying for exam point of view only, but two types of the exams are there. One is exam taken by the RGHS, another one is exam taken by the patients. So the students should prepare for both the conditions. so patient examination we need everything so for the rgss examination we need little bit things uh, so they are distributed the marks very less that is a decision taken by the apex body so i can't comment on that number 1 number 2 whatever the marks given by ncsm ignore it but uh, the patients are giving a number of marks to you good marks first rank second rank in the society please in the view of patient examination please study the neuro anatomy properly but exam point of view nervous system is very easy first thing you should remember for the rghs exam point of view nervous system is very easy but patient examination point of view it is difficult so that is the uh, and uh, through this great jignasa platform so we can put the queries to the ncsm also why you are allotted very less marks but we can't uh, change that but uh, we can give the idea to the uh, ncsm to allot the more marks like that hmm? yes karthik next sir uh, sorry sir the next question is the from dhanashri uh, the question is sir is circle of willis is asked for saq and should we remember all the nucleus sulci and gyri of cerebrum please please repeat So sir is circle, circle of willis is asked for for saq and should we remember all the nucleus sulci and gyri of cerebrum okay 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 so circle of willis actually they can ask for a short question for five mark at that time you should write how it is going to form where it is going to present so how the anterior carotid artery and posterior vertebral arteries they are going to join make the circle so they can ask for five mark that is a, uh, there, there will be a chance when that is not a much difficult question also but the second question what you have asked you should remember all the nuclei and other things it's very simple uh, main sulcus main gyrus you should remember so all the sulcus all the gyrus it is very difficult to remember to the students but uh, uh, as the exam uh, rghs exam point of view Uh, you should remember a main sulcus main gyrus for example central sulcus lateral sulcus and paratoccipital sulcus and pre central sulcus and pre central gyrus post central gyrus because on that post central gyrus and pre central gyrus important functional anatomy is there na so because of that reason you must and should remember at least minimum so this nuclei and everything if it is possible you can remember if it is not possible at least write the outlines okay next thank you sir the next question is sir in rachana sharira osteology how to remember muscle origin and insertion okay uh this is the, the thing is it's very easy when you are involved in the dissection if you are 
dedicated in the dissection hall it's very easy job to remember the muscles so i know it's very difficult to remember each and every uh, origin points and uh, inserting point but make one plan first name the muscle for example uh, trapezius you can take the trapezius where it is present first remember where it is present it is present in the back in the back region what are the bones the bones if you know the location of the muscle exactly where it is present then you can write the origin and insertion maybe little bit confusion maybe origin point may be written as a insertion and insertion point may be written as a origin that is a minor uh, that that's going to happen but the thing at least where it is the uh, muscle is present if you know exactly the area then is very easy to write for example the trapezius present in the back region in the back region what are the bones one is the central part there is the uh, vertebrae and second one is the scapula third one is the ribs here the ribs i uh, usually it is not going to origin it's a superficial muscle automatically it's not going to origin from the ribs then it is originating from the spinous process of the cervical vertebrae and thoracic vertebrae and also it is origin, uh, originating from the uh, external occipital protuberance so on that area what are the landmarks are there first you should remember after that you can plan for the origin and superior fibers are going to insert into the uh, uh, what is that spine of the scapula and inferior fibers also insert into the inferior lip of the spine of the scapula so like that you can write but the thing is where it is present exactly for example another example i am giving a deltoid muscle the deltoid muscle is uh, anterior fibers are originating from the clavicle posterior fibers are originating from the scapula spine and middle fibers are originating from the particularly here what is the acromion process and finally it's going to insert into the deltoid tuberosity so like this number 1 uh, all the muscles origin and insertion it's very difficult to the student but important muscles deltoid and pectoralis group of the muscles a pectoralis major and uh, latissimus muscle dorsi and uh, gluteus maximus these are the important questions and the muscle should be studied according to the groups for example uh, muscles of mastication this question is asked once uh, in the question paper repeatedly muscles of mastication so muscles of the mastication make the group masseter temporalis medial pterygoid lateral pterygoid muscles of respiration and hamstring muscles calf muscles flexor group extensor group like this group wise if you are studied then it is very easy to remember common nerve supply common action but individual muscles if you are taken textbook and reading one by one it is not possible and you are not going to understand actively if you are involved in the dissection definitely you are going to write origin and insertion in the exam by imagination yes please next question sir the next question is uh, is from a student named virappa the question is sir in sacral plexus is it necessary to remember all branches <laughs> if you ask to the anatomy teacher definitely the sir is telling to remember the must and should but i know also the things difficult things but at least sacral plexus how it is going to form and main sciatica nerve how it is going to form where it is supplying at least major nerves represent in the exam instead of wasting the time to remember all the things try to remember all the things if it is not possible so main nerves at least major nerves you should write in the exams thank you sir and if you uh, if you are not written that all the branches then they are not going to deduct you marks so at least uh, teacher has a uh, teacher also having the courtesy at least the student written how the sacral plexus is forming and uh, diagram also drawn and uh, how the nerve is emerging and major nerve is written then definitely a uh, minimum they are allotting the marks there is there is not a question but uh, most of the times i am evaluating na papers at that time student written even though two to three points regarding that we are giving a uh, minimum uh, out of five to and half like that because anatomy is very vast subject it's very difficult to remember and is a volatile subject at least the student did the effort and written the important points at least three to four words anatomical words most of the times anatomy teachers are giving the marks thank you sir yes. the next question yes. is 
uh, from a student named Sagar, sir. Uh, the question is, sir, can we score good marks by completing previous year question papers? Yes, please, please repeat the question. Can we score good marks by completing previous year question papers? Uh, yes, it, it, is, it is helpful for passing. Definitely, that is the previous question papers, if you are solved, that uh, may help to you for uh, just passing, but it is very difficult to get the score. Answer. Thank you, sir. The next question is, sir, if external features of spinal cord is asked, what all should be included? Okay, very good. External features of the spinal cord, first thing is right coverings. Number one, the coverings of the uh, spinal cord. That is dura mater, arachnoid mater, pia mater. Coverings over. Next point, major sulcus and uh, sulcus are fissures of the spinal cord. So number one, anterior median fissure. This is a spinal cord imagine. Anterior median fissure, posterior median fissure. Anterior lateral fissure and posterior lateral fissure, uh, sorry, sulcus, only anterior median fissure, anterior lateral sulcus 2 and posterior median sulcus, anterior posterior lateral sulcus, totally 6 sulcus are there. So anterior median, posterior median, anterior lateral 2, posterior lateral 2. Anterior median fissure and posterior sulcus divides the spinal cord right and left halls and anterior lateral anterior lateral gives a rise to nerve fiber and posterior lateral also gives a rise to a uh, nerve fiber from the anterior lateral motor nerve is there from posterior lateral sensory nerve is there so this is about the external features and uh, sulcuses first is covering second one is the sulcus and fissure third one is the surface so when anterior median fissure is there anterior surface lateral surface and the posterior surface over next is the other other points on the external features the spinal cord is going to terminate at the level of l1 the spinal cord is going to end at the level of l1 how it is going to end it is ends like a cone i think all of you know cone ice cream the tip of the cone bottom the cone it's going to end like a cone hence the ending part of the spinal cord is called by the name of conus medullaris very important underline this uh, question maybe they are going to ask uh, uh, multiple choice conus medullaris usually it's a question was asked previously for two mark uh, so nowadays there is no two mark question now so conus medullaris repeatedly asked the question what is the conus medullaris the tip of the terminal part of the spinal cord ends like a cone it's called conus medullaris over and the tip of the conus medullaris is continue with the thin fiber or thin uh, seat of what that is called uh, pia mater that is extending up to the sacrum. That is a thin filament like structure which is extending from sacrum to the tip of the conus medullaris. That's called pilum terminale. This is also repeated last question. Pilum terminale. And phylum terminale is divided into two parts phylum externum, phylum internum. Over phylum terminale, conus medullaris. But the spinal cord is going to terminate at L1, but the spinal nerves are lumbar, sacral, coccygeal. Then all the nerve fibers, bunch of nerve fibers are descending downwards. Even after ending the spinal cord, bunch of the nerve fibers are extending downwards. That bunch of the nerve fibers looking like a tail of the horse. Hence, it is called by the name of quada equina. So, quada equina, phylum terminale, conus medullaris, sulcus, and coverings. If you explain this, it's going to uh, that is, uh, finish the external features of the spinal cord. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, the next question is, is manas related to nervous system? What what question, please? Uh, is manas, manas has to do anything with the nervous system? Means it is manas related okay, to okay, the nervous okay, system. Okay, okay, okay. According to modern science, the manas or uh, what you are calling mind actually they are explaining the mind is present in the brain so especially the uh, the mental activities that is especially i told na limbic lobe they are marking on the limbic area so they related to the mind activity but according to ayurveda the manas is present in hridaya that is heart then manas is present in the heart means 
the question is the nervous system is different cardiovascular system is different but there is a recent research explains that the little brain in the heart inside the heart there is a small brain it means the outer surface of the brain uh, sorry heart having a special arrangement of the network of the nerve that network of the nerve how much network of the nerve is there similar to the brain anatomically there is a similarity hence it is called the little brain in the heart what is what it's going to do it is going to control the activity of the brain how much commands sending to the heart from the brain more than that this little brain present inside the heart sending the messages to the brain number one point number two it means heart is controlling the brain so sending the commands to the brain number number two the electromagnetic field the activity of the electromagnetic field of the heart is more than that of the electrical activity of the brain it means because of that reason when you are taking the ecg at that time you are putting the lead to the upper limb lower limb thorax because electrical electrical activity can be recorded in any part of the body that is cardiac electrical activity but the brain related electrical activity can be recorded with eeg but eeg is done only on the brain because electrical activity electromagnetic activity is less so by all these what i am explaining definitely the heart whatever the little brain inside the heart that definitely has a relation with the brain so that brain is controlling the activity of the uh, sorry the little brain present in the heart which sends the commands to the central nervous system that central nervous system is indirectly operated by this little brain so definitely manas is present in the hrudaya only or in the heart only i think uh, as per my knowledge i clarified but uh, it is a uh, lack of the time it is very difficult to uh, clarify these uh, lengthy questions okay anyway that is a uh, mind is definitely present in the heart and also according to modern science mind is present in brain sir the next question is uh, sir how for how many marks spinal cord can be given ha uh, usually usually many time we have gone through the question paper the cross section of the spinal cord or explain the spinal cord uh, most of the times it is a five mark question when it is a five mark question why you are worrying most of the time it is asking the five mark why you are worrying about the uh, complete uh, so to remember the nuclei present inside the uh, gray matter at least external features internal features most of the students what they are uh, thinking they how to remember all this nuclei and how to remember all these fibers uh, because of that reason most of the students they are not at all studying ignore which part is difficult up to that you study and after that just stop the matter whatever the thing it may be so at least in the exam you can write the external features uh, internal features gray matter white matter so many things are there na why are concentrating only in difficult part which part is easy first prepare it and which part is difficult so keep sight if it is possible prepare it otherwise at least you can write uh, wind up the answers na and if you are also studied the laminar theory nuclear theory present in the spinal cord it is not possible to write a per five mark okay usually it is a okay, five sir. mark question uh, hmm. uh, the next question is sir it is compulsory to to write all the functional area of cerebral cortex if the question on cerebrum is asked for five marks no 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 not needed not needed generally if they are asked the question cerebrum you should not write the functional areas because that comes under physiology so we are nowhere concerned with that if the question is explain a uh, functional uh, areas of the cerebrum direct question then you should write not complete so pre motor area primary motor area somato sensory area and uh, visual area and uh, auditory primary auditory area like that just write important to remember these areas how to plan frontal lobe is motor parietal lobe is sensory occipital lobe visual temporal lobe is hearing and insula is autonomic nervous system 
then frontal lobe is uh, related to the motor activities then answer is very simple all the motor activity primary motor area and uh, that is the pre motor area and uh, uh, all these are under the uh, under uh, comes under the frontal lobe and uh, sensory area primary sensory somato sensory area and uh, then visual area is in occipital lobe and hearing that is the in the temporal lobe auditory area primary auditory area uh, pre auditory area they are present in the auditory so like this you can write and uh, usually the students are worrying about that uh, broadmans area just remember the scientist broadman kept the numbers so there is a broadmans area how to remember all these numbers if it is possible remember otherwise no problem the important broadmans area you must and should remember what important broca's area wernick area you, these two important things and uh, well, the area that is uh, on more is uh, uh, auditory area auditory area so these are the important uh, areas you must and should remember number and where it is present exactly yes and next is uh, sir the next question is i'm reading uh, just a minute sir pons midbrain diencephalon and medulla are all desired to know no topics uh, but how deep should we study those topics sir so repeat repeat the question sir how deep we should study the topics like pons midbrain diencephalon and medulla oh. there was topics sir but the weightage from neuroanatomy is less so how deep oh. they should uh, study the uh, topics is the question okay, 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 okay from the exam point of view just uh, remember the mid brain so mid brain means external features you are going to study definitely that's so it's very easy but in the mid brain you must and should remember the two important point one is red nucleus another one is substantia nigra if you know the red nucleus then substantia nigra if you remember the substantia nigra then you must and should remember the parkinson's disease because applied anatomy related to that then is the mid brain mid brain okay sorry so mid brain external features and uh, internally important clinical related uh, nuclei if you remember that's sufficient and uh, you take the same thing is the pons and the medulla oblongata but you must and should remember important features for example in the medulla oblongata pyramidal decussation olive and back and uh, means anterior surface on the anterior surface of the this particularly uh, medulla oblongata there is a a uh, hypoglossal triangle vagal triangle because if they are injured cardiac center so vomiting center they are present on the anterior surface of the medulla oblongata so in uh, while writing the answers related to this particularly at least external features you must and should but internal features or sectional anatomy what they are given in the textbook uh, it is uh, uh, if you are known it's a better but otherwise no problem at least the student written the external features clearly then teachers are going to understand the student studied and they are allotting the marks to you i think i clarified that uh, question yes sir uh, thank you so much sir and i i think that will be all from our question and answer session sir um thank you uh, for really in, uh, interacting with all the uh, students sir and nervous system wasn't a easy topic and and i will tell you sir it was the most demanded topic since we began the first session everyone were asking uh, nervous system sir please do a, se a session on nervous system nervous system uh, so it was the most demanded topic nervous system uh, so thank you for agreeing uh, on that sir uh, for delivering a session and helping the students with their preparation uh, i on behalf of my whole team i uh, would like to thank you uh, for that sir uh, we are uh, we are really great uh, feel great to host you sir we really felt great to host you thank you so much sir thank you karthik uh, thank you special thanks to you and also it is a very vast topic my level best i covered within one hour i also took a lot of time also but uh, how much it is uh, beneficial to the students i don't know but anyway i tried my level best 
thank you thank you one and all thank you sir it's it's really a vast topic sir i i can agree with that and you really covered uh, all the topics very nicely and uh, the amount of questions we, we received tells uh, amount of interaction the students add with the session sir so really thank you for that sir thank you thank you thank you i request your permission to end the session sir okay thank you thank you sir